am Brittany Christen. I am a commentator, a podcast host, a personality. I like to call myself the Black Culture Aficionado because I just love us, y'all. How are y'all doing today? Good. Good. Glad to have you here. We are so excited to kick off Black Writers Weekend 2023, day two. Um, today we've got a very exciting conversation for you all. I have the pleasure of moderating a panel from writer to publisher. We're going to speak with Black authors who are thriving. Uh, with KDP in today's market. So, without further ado, make sure I'm together. Y'all couldn't hear me? Okay, because I could put my classroom voice on. Any educators in the house? Okay, we got one, two, we, girl, back to school. Mm. Keep us in your prayers, okay? All right, so um, first I would like to bring out Phoenix Williams. She's coming straight out of Chicagoland. Phoenix Williams is uh, as seen from Sheen Magazine, is a CEO, a screenwriter, and a best-selling award-nominated author and public speaker. She credits her success to standing in her truth, obsessing over anime, owning who she is, and giving her fears the bird. <laughs> In her own words, I write books and talk shit. I sure do. We're going to talk some shit today, yes. <laughs> Up next, I have Ms. Myrna Gale. Myrna Gale is the CEO at 3G Publishing, Inc. Her passion for children inspired her to develop a company that would keep the basics of reading, writing, and creativity a top priority for children, adolescents, and adults. Ms. Gale previously worked in the legal environment for nearly three decades, and although her passion for law still remains, she is now combining her passion for creative writing and publishing into her repertoire, bringing 3G Publishing into a major success. And let me get you guys to turn the mics on, too. Because I'm loud, too. They didn't tell me at first. There we go. You got it? Let me see. All right, it's a and last but not least, rounding out our trifecta is Miss Burnett Sherman. Burnett is a gifted, intuitive, and spiritual messenger, and she fuses this into her work as a writer and a marketing consultant. Also a playwright, Burnett's play, Four Wives and a Will, was performed as a part of the 2021 She ATL Summer Theater Festival. She is also the, also the author of five novels, two novellas, a children's book, a poetry book, and two self-help books. Over the past 20 years, Burnett has worked in nonprofit organizations and universities, as well as a freelance consultant in marketing, communications, research, and evaluation, and program management. We have a lot in common, girl. <laughs> we'll talk. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so first, before we get started, we were, we're talking about KDP, using KDP for our use in marketing and just mastering that in this field. We all know what KDP is in here, right? Okay, great. So let's hop right into it. What is, I'm gonna start with you, Phoenix, okay? I'm sorry, may I interrupt you? I heard yeah. somebody said no. Oh, let's make sure. If there's someone said no here, please ask your question of KDP before we get started. Yeah, I was told it's okay. Yes, yep, uh, that's right. <laughs> yep, back in the day, remember when Amazon only sold books? Yes. And wow, look at how life just really That was just, a wonderful time to make a lot of money. It really was. <laughs> but Amazon ain't missing no checks now. That is true. Prime is definitely going to take that $14.99 <laughs> every I got grandfathered time. in at nine ninety nine. You know what? I did too, but they changed it on me. They better not change it on me. I want to go over there and talk to the KDP people. You need people. to talk to KDP. <laughs> they in the house, so we'll make sure we shout them out, of course. Let's start right from the beginning. What is your area of expertise? And we're going to go down the line here, uh, pertaining to the topic of successfully writing and publishing work through utilizing KDP? So for me, I have been, I've been writing since I left law school in 2012, okay? Um, so I've used KDP that entire time. I've been able to successfully build a career, um, skipping genres throughout the entire process. I started out as a street lit author, went to erotica, went to romance, now I'm in sci-fi, and I was able to do that successfully through KDP without missing a check. I love that, yes. Okay, I have been, as they mentioned before, in the legal environment for over 30 years, and then I transitioned to become an independent publisher because I published the book through Author House, and they did such a disastrous job that I just sat at the table one day with my husband and said, I can do better. And so I went ahead and started with children, and from children I went to adults, 
I was led to go from children to go to illiterate adults and teach them that their stories had value. And then I continued from there. Now KDP is part of what I can offer my clients as a publisher because now I am the CEO of 3G Publishing and have been for almost 14 years. Um, what I do is not a, something that, oh, I'm doing because I have to do it. It's because I have a passion for it. So I am a boutique, boutique size. I only take people that are referred to me because I want to be on a one-on-one -on -one with my clients always. Okay, KDP is, is an art. <laughs> it's a, a way of publishing, but it's something that we are all here to give you an understanding that you have to work for that, okay, and work hard if you want it to function for you. Yeah, we'll come back to that, yeah, for sure. So I guess I'm the, husband's different. Let me see. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. No. So I'm the newbie. I started publishing in 2016. I've been writing for a long time, but I didn't really take it seriously until I was approaching my 40th. And I was like, you know what? Why not? And I decided to, I decided to use KDP because I started crunching numbers. And there were the routes of going traditional and going the traditional route meant more time possibly, and I was doing the math of, you know, maybe I'll try it myself, get more of the royalties, do all of the work, let's not underestimate that. <laughs> <laughs> because it's, there is work, it's work involved. It's a, lot of, it's a lot of work and it doesn't stop, but I love the independence of it, and I love the freedom and flexibility of being an independent author, and mm -hmm. being, um, self-published and now even you know helping other people on their own journeys of creating works that inspire and uplift and so I think KDP allows allows you to have that freedom and flexibility yeah so there's a lot of experience sitting b between the three of you all and um, KDP I think it started around like 2009 or some somewhere maybe approaching 15 years or so okay. right so there's been a lot of opportunities for growth for the user side, and for, for at least two of you all, you all, were all took the traditional route first, correct? I took a horrible route uh, when you don't do research. So <laughs> what I did first was I said, okay, I'm gonna self-publish. Had no clue what self-publishing was. I just put it on Amazon, and my book did not go platinum. It went wood. So <laughs> it went wood. <laughs> <laughs> so then I ended up getting a publishing deal three years after, and I used that platform with the publisher not to make money. I did it so I can get an audience. Then towards the end, I had made the publisher so much money that we went ahead and did a hybrid deal for a year or two where we would both split the cost, but split the money and I could still use their platform. And then now I'm back to self-publish. And throughout that time, as soon as I got with the publisher, I used it as a learning experience. How do you publish books via KDP? How do you do it in a way where you can make money? How do you build your platform? Because KDP, as he said, is an art but there's also a science to the algorithm. So you have to learn that too. So once you learn how KDP works, the checks just keep coming. Every 28th of every month, you will get your direct deposit. Yeah. You wake up and be like, oh, thank you, Jesus. Nice. So that on the first, they can come and get the rest of the prime. <laughs> <laughs> you, you mentioned two things that I wanna come back to, but I, I'm, something gives me a hunch that you're gonna touch on these. So I wanted to talk about establishing an audience later, and then also learning the algorithm with KDP. So we'll circle back around to those, but give me your experience as well, because you also said that you had a treacherous experience before yes. you got to KDP. Um, I offer KDP, if my clients come to me with that suggestion in their mind, I let them know what the process of elimination is. KDP is no different than printing a paper book. The work behind it that you put in it is what you're gonna get. Now, I I've, I've have clients that come to me and say, I've got my manuscript, I've got this, I've got this, and I'm like, oh, that's great. Uh, where's your marketing? Where's your crowd? Who, who are you touching? Who are you touching? All of us think that people go to Amazon and pick your book at random. 
<laughs> no, sir. <laughs> and if you put the wrong tags when you upload your book, whether it be KDP or just a self-published book, if you don't put those tags in pub properly, no one is going to see your stuff. And tags don't have to tie in directly to what you're reading. The secret I've told my, my authors is put tags that you see consistently. Mm. When you put your tag in to go and say, I want to know where I can buy a certain gown of this, this, is this, and that, and I want it specifically with sequins or blue, a navy blue or royal blue, that's what you're going to get when you pop it up, right? Well, that's how your tags on your book should be. And if you see a bestseller, of somebody else that isn't even your topic, put in one of their tags, <laughs> okay? Noted. Are we keeping track? Because I okay, feel like it's about to be some good, notes, some good gems today. <laughs> you no, know, we'll, we'll put three tag words. Yeah. That's not enough, honey. Put as many tags until the thing says stop. It won't give you another space. Mm -hmm. That's what I do for my clients. You can put 100 in if you make an ad. You can put 100 keywords. Yes. Oh, see? And max it out. You max it out, right? It's, it's yeah. important. It's important. And... I, I, I love to see people succeed in their publishing, but it breaks my heart when they have no knowledge of the work that it takes. Because don't leave it up to your publisher, because I don't do that. I check, make sure that your work is done properly, and whatever you tell me to do, that's what I'm gonna do. And I make suggestions if you don't wanna do that, because some people will say, oh, that's a lot of work. Not a problem, we're done. I'm paid already, so we're done. And then later they'll come around and say, they got to pay me another fee mm. to sit with me and consult with them on how to do what they didn't do, what they were going to get with their package deal. So these are the things you have to take into consideration. You have your manuscript. Do not reach out to KDP or a publisher until you have got done your homework. Okay? What's the and homework that's marketing like? that's right. and your audience. All right. So we're there. Audience, first things first, right? Let's right. start on the bottom. How do we establish an audience before? So I wish I was like winning on all fronts, but I'm gonna be real, it's hard. Like uh, Phoenix said, she went through the publishing route first, which helped her establish an audience. If you are not going that route, you are literally building it person by person, post by post, engaging with others. I started doing TikTok when I was writing my current book, my latest book. I said, let me go on TikTok. This is new, everybody's on TikTok, right? To try to just like start engaging with other authors and writers and readers especially. And I think this is one of the things a lot of authors get in trouble with is authors are not the ones buying your books. Mm -hmm. So don't think I'm going to get into a community with all these authors and start selling your books because guess what? They're trying to sell their books too. Right. Yeah. They're not buying them. So you got to go where the readers are. And for me personally, I find face-to-face -face has been the best way. Getting into people's faces, letting them see you. Unless you hit the lottery with a TikTok that goes viral, yeah. you know, which some people do. Mm -hmm. I wish. I I'm, I'm still waiting. <laughs> I'm still waiting for that viral TikTok. And you know, it's like you, you, you really never know when it happens. So in the meantime, you still have to continue to produce. That goes in the, into the work that goes into it. So what happens when we don't get the chance to get face to face? We just are moving past a, a year and a half, two year period of a pandemic. So the face-to-face -face was blocked. How do you develop an audience, you know, aside from social media? I mean, like, what, what specific strategies are we using? Go ahead. Okay, I'm gonna uh, tell you something that I tell all my clients, and, they've been, and those that have listened and used it have been successful. When you get ready to publish your book, you know what it's all about, okay? So in your community and outside of the community, there are people that are dealing with what you're writing about. For instance, if you write a children's book, where do you want to go? What's, what age is the child? Is it a storybook that a mother would read from the crib till they're five, or what? What age? So you go to daycares, you go to schools, and you introduce it to that age group. You ask the principal if when the scholastic comes to sell their books, 
will they add yours as an extra flyer? You'll, you'll give them the flyers. I've had authors that have sold out when they do the scholastics events at the school. Scholastics, I'm sorry. Because you have to know, you have to reach out to those audiences. If you're writing a book about abuse, a woman being abused, anything like that, go to these shelters where they have these women or these set up programs where they have these women that have been abused. You're not gonna go and sell it to your neighbor who lives in this big old house and she ain't never been abused a day in her life. She don't want to hear that. But people that have lived it mm -hmm. embrace it and say, wait a minute, this woman has been through what I've been through. And when my people that write children's books, and I have children that have written children's books, I associate it to their age group, I send the cover letter, and I send the copy of the book. You're only getting one copy, OK? <laughs> I'm not storing your class. You're only getting one copy. And if you want that child to come and read the book to that class, then I set it up with the parents. And if it's an adult, they can do it. But you have to have that in place before you go running crazy, which is one of the things that I do first. I do the cover for all of my office first because I want you to plaster it on your refrigerator and be proud of it, look forward to it, okay? And then use that on all your flyers to introduce your book that they think is already there, so they're excited. They're gonna set up appointments, so you better have your act together and have a publisher that's reliable, okay? Because I go to bat for my clients, because I go to their shows, I go to all their events, because I'm supposed to support them. So you guys just be sure of where you want your book to be displayed. That's a good point I wanted to bring up when it's talking about bringing up, uh, putting together an audience um, and getting your crowd. First things first, your publisher is not your publicist. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times people get a publishing deal or they'll even be over there pitching for a publishing deal thinking that as soon as I get the publisher, I'm good. I'm gonna sit back, I'm gonna relax, and have a wonderful time. Even uh, Penguin, even like the big four, right? They will do some of the outreach for you, but most of it's on you. My second point is your family and your friends are the last people to support you. They are never buying that book. I don't care what they say. I have 30 books. He's right. I have 30 books. My mama, you've all seen, is sitting right out there at Pitch Fest. Ask me how many books she bought. I have given her every single one. And when I said, can you buy one? She said, can I get the family discount, which means free, okay? She is never buying a book. My daddy is never buying a book. The only one who ever bought one was my grandma, and she wanted a discount, okay? So everybody, stop asking your family, stop asking your friends for the last one. Yep. When we're talking about building an audience, I always tell people, if you can't do face-to-face, -face, because that's where I built my audience, was going out. I remember I started, in 2015, I was on the road every month as this book of one, that book event. I was all over the nation going to book events. And I built my audience up slowly. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Tamika Newhouse was my publisher, okay? Back when she was still publishing people. And she would be like, okay, Phoenix, I'm going on the road. And she would go ahead and tell me to pack my bag, get my books together, and meet her at the airport. She didn't care what I had going on. Me and my son, well, okay, son, I'm gonna see you when I get back, all right? <laughs> For, for a whole like two years, I was on the road every single month. Now that's not always doable for a lot of people. I had a really good support system around me so they were able to take care of my son while I was gone. But if you cannot do that, I tell the people I consult with, go to Book Funnel, okay? If you've never heard of Book Funnel, please write that down. It is an author swap. So people like me are on there with a newsletter of about five or 10,000 people, right? You are an author who is new. You do not have that kind of outreach. I will put your book in my newsletter so my people can see it if you put my book in your newsletter later on so people can see my book, okay? Um, so write that down, book funnel. It's all one word. N-N-E-L, book, B-O-O-K, F-U-N-N-E-L. And then, girl, I just had to point something out, too, that's really big in developing and maintaining that audience. You touched on that, too. You adding a book to your what? Oh, your newsletter. You so when you get in front of these people, you got to get that information, too, yeah. right? 
Exactly. I'm um I'm asking everybody every time I see you. What's your uh, what's your email address? What's your uh, Instagram? <laughs> and I'm not doing that because I want to be your best friend. I'm doing that because I'm about to sell you a book. You just don't know it yet. <laughs> Bingo. <laughs> it's levels to it. <laughs> <laughs> everybody you meet is your best friend because you want your best friend to support you, right? And so your best friend's always gonna buy your book. My best friend's doing check-in. Y'all, I met her this morning. Her name is Norma. She's out there. She's bought every single book. Guess what? Y'all are on the same level as Norma to me. You're my best friend. You're going to buy my book, whether you know it right now or not. You might say, I'm never buying a book by that lady. The third time you see it, you're going to buy it. <laughs> you got to warm them up. I love it. Yes. <laughs> I do have some. You know she got some you books see here. see me tomorrow at the uh, bookstore gallery, best friends. Come on over. <laughs> see me tomorrow. We're going to have a wonderful time. I'm playing games and everything. We're doing giveaways. Okay, so I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna switch our gears a little bit here. So, in today's cultural climate, do you think that the utilization of KDP and other self-publishing spaces are helping showcase the diversity of um, the authors and books? It depends on the publisher. I'm sorry because I think that for me, I have a website that my clients make more royalty than they can make on any other site. And I did that deliberately because I make my money up front. So if you're going to pay me, I have to make sure that at some point, some way, if you get your marketing right, that you send your people, I give you a link that you put on your website, that when they hit it, they come to my website, the books are ordered and shipped, and you're making a higher profit. I don't believe, I mean, it just rubs me the wrong way, just like even in KDP. KDP says you get 70%, mm -hmm. but that's before they deduct everything they're going to deduct. Yeah. So if you got a $15 book, you're getting $4. That is true. Okay. With my company, if you're, if you're purchasing a wholesale amount, like just, just use $5, okay, your book is selling for $15. I deduct from that $15 the $5 that you don't even have to pay for those books. Okay, your people come to the site, they order it. You're literally making ten dollars. I, I refuse. I mean, I, I am also a published author, and when I did my book, the book sold for twenty nine ninety five, and I got a dollar and thirty two cents for every book. I was like, that's hard copy, right, or ebook? No, that was soft. Uh, oh, soft cover. Okay. okay, yeah. Okay. And it was a 503-page book. Yeah. Okay. Ooh. Talk to me later. I'll show you how to uh, figure that out. Yeah, because, yeah, I mean, this is, this is what they were doing. Mm -hmm. And so I, I wanted something to be totally out of the water. And people still look at me and say, how, how, do, how do your clients make that kind of money? And I said, if they have the audience, they will be getting a check every month. But since you don't have an audience, I'm, I do like the record companies. I pay yearly because at, yeah. I pay yearly because at the end of the year, when Ingram sends me that report, and some of your books have been returned, and I've had some major mm. pub, uh, authors that have at the end of the year had a return of seven hundred and sixty-two dollars, but I had already paid the royalties. So I told him, you owe me $762, and here are that's your painful. books. That's painful. That's painful. So, and that's painful for both them and for me to ask. But I can't be out of the money. Yeah. I did my job. So he turned around and wrote me a check. And he said, why don't you just pay me yearly? I said, I'm going to use that method for everybody. And they all accepted it. The music industry, that's how they pay, yearly. So I said, okay, let's do this. Can I but it works. Sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead one thing. So you guys are here in KDP, so Kindle Direct Publishing. So you are probably familiar with Kindle Unlimited, Kindle Books, and and so I just want to get clear on one thing because I think we're talking about paperbacks and printing and self-publishing and just publishing in general, is that Amazon offers you ebook publishing. So some people build careers just on publishing ebooks. Some people use paperbacks. If you're in a physical space, you may want to add a paperback. They also have hardback, so you can also publish a hardback. I publish every book I have on Kindle, which is the ebook version. I also publish, now all of them are also in KDP, 
for paperback, and I think I've done like one or two in hardback. But you don't have to do paperback. If you're just getting started, you can phase your way in. You can test the waters. You can say, okay, how do I, how do I publish a, a Kindle? How do I just get a book on somebody's phone that they can read? You can just do the ebook. And in that part, you are getting 70% as long as you price it at $2.99 to $9.99. If you decide you want a physical copy, which most authors do want to hold a book in their hand at some point, <laughs> if you want that physical copy, then you go through the process of reformatting your paper or your, you know, for a physical paper, and you can publish it through KDP, you can publish it through Amazon. And I have found, and this is just me, I've tried working just recently with my last book, with Ingram Spark, and Blur and Amazon. And I will say the easiest one to deal with as far as making changes and updates is Amazon. I am still waiting, still waiting to hear back from Ingram Spark on a request I put in two and a half weeks ago. Uh, still waiting to hear back from Blur, where I just literally just uploaded a new, because I'm a publisher, so I have my own ISBNs. I was like, okay, I'm gonna have to use a new ISBN because they are not getting back to me. And you gotta keep moving. This is one of the things when you're an indie author and indie publisher and you're self-publishing and, and doing that, you, you are your own business and you are responsible for doing all of those things and deciding how do you set yourself up. Can I just call in really quickly? You made a great point about having a career based totally on eBooks. Ebooks are sending my son to college. Okay, um, that's how I make the majority of my money is through ebooks. I also do consulting on people trying to start doing their ebook career. The main problem you're finding if you are not selling via KDP with ebook is probably one of three things. One, you're not in the right genres. Two, the cover is not that great. And three, you are well overpriced. I see people selling an ebook for fifteen ninety nine when Terry McMillan is in the same category selling her book for eight ninety nine and she is way more prolific than you are. How dare you out try to outprice her? <laughs> right. So um, it's one thing I, I, I do to make sure that I can make the money, especially when you're doing a series, you want read through. So I read through from book one through book whatever, right? So what you wanna go ahead and do is start off at 99 cent and go up a dollar per book. If you're in my class at 2 p.m., you'll hear all about this. Uh, we're talking about writing, marketing, and publishing in four months or less, so we'll talk all about that because I know it's not about how to like set KDP up, but um, you can make money on KDP doing the eBooks. Price it at 2.99 or more. Okay, but you have to market yourself, all right? No one's going to just, Oprah's not gonna find you the next day. I was very upset when I realized I was not going on her show. You have to make sure that you are um, out there finding the people, okay? Yeah. Again, it's not easy. Yes? You mentioned if your um, author comes to you without an audience, right? So. Who are you, for every book that somebody writes in here, say you write a book, what would your interest be? In, for your book, what would your book be about? Okay. okay. What would your, if you wrote a book, what would your book be about? Okay, so your audience are poets, right? People that love poetry, okay? Where would you go? to find an audience of people who love poetry. Media. And they have, they have a lot of groups. Yeah. Now, a lot of these groups don't want you to advertise your business. Mm -hmm. They want you to advertise your poem. Mm -hmm. They want you to put at least one poem for free without putting a copyright infringement on them. Okay, but because they're, they're gonna put it out there for you, right? That's who you will go to. Then you would go and find out where they're having the poetry readings. 
and they would let you come in there with your books and the audience for free. Mic night, right? This is what I'm saying. You have to find your people, not only on social media, okay? Social media is a kind of interesting platform to me because people are either after your money and they lying, okay? Or either people steal your ideas yes. for free that you have worked so hard to, to cater to your clients that if you, if you go to my social media page, you'll see all about my family. I don't, I have a, I have a 3G publishing uh, page on, in and of itself, but there's not a whole lot, lot there. There's some things there. I do not do social media for reasons of having been contacted through social media with crazy people. Okay, <laughs> and I have had to I even have security. And that's not, and, and you know, it's difficult for my family because I've had people, because I've been, you know, on television before, and people, people will come up to you and just touch you, and that, that's just weird to me. So I stopped doing that. I stopped doing television. You know, and it's so funny because a woman recognized me here today and I just laughed. I looked and she says, oh, you look like a celebrity. And I'm like <laughs> laughing. I'm like, oh, really? Thank you. And I'm like, oh. and then she, all of a sudden she said, I've seen you on television before. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> but you, I, it's something that I feel, I'm, I'm very personal. Like, like when we get off of here, I'm going to call Phoenix and give her her number. I'm going to get my number. I, I need to, I'm uh, Face to face, talk. I need to hear your voice. I need to hear what is your anxiety? What is it that's not working for you? So I'm not a social media buff, but there are some people that have made money with social media. And beware, because they're selling packages on how to teach you KDP for $500. Oh my God, don't I know it? I can you teach still you still have in to 10 do minutes. the work on your own. We, we have a few, a few um, questions here. Yes, I see. Oh, are we going to the back? Right here, this gentleman well, right here. I think oh, him. was up back there oh. a long time. Yeah. <laughs> We got this lady right here. Her hand was up first, and then we can come to you here. Okay. In the hat, yes, ma'am. Oh, okay. Hello, how everybody is. So I have this book on KDP, and it's for women incarcerated because I, I'm a counselor for women who have the bars in the So because all the proceeds go to them, how do I make it a bestseller for them? Do I have to go back now and change the tags because it was written in 2019? <coughs> Okay, so there is no clear cut, here's the formula how to become a bestseller. Mm -hmm. I've been a bestseller 21 times, each time it's been completely different, okay? So, <laughs> I was about to say, 21 times sounds pretty consistent to me, if you ask me. <laughs> Just 21 times, <laughs> bestseller. I'm not really good at this, girl. <laughs> But each time is different, right? So it's not like I can tell, I can tell you, oh, hey, step one, do this. Step two, do that. Not at all. Now, each time I have been a bestseller, it has been through KDP. Mm -hmm. When I was not doing it, when I was doing wide uh, releasing, and if you come to the class, I'll tell you the difference between KDP and wide. But when I was doing wide, not so much. As soon as I started doing Kindle Unlimited, KDP exclusive, I uh, started becoming a bestseller, and I've done it the last 21 times. Come see me afterwards, okay? We'll talk, because it's not, a, I can't give you a formula, but I can go ahead and give you some steps to go ahead and get started, okay? No yes. problem. Okay, we had this, this young man right here. Yes, I was going to ask uh, what KDP got spoke earlier on algorithm. So how does that work? So, there's not like a clear, like, here's how the algorithm works. But there are things that you have to do to make your book stand out. One thing that I was told by KDP was you cannot, you don't use your name as a keyword. You only get seven keywords. And uh, every client I've ever consulted with, they're using their name and their title as a keyword, wasting two spaces out of the seven, when according to KDP, those are already keywords. So don't do that. Um, a lot of times people will just pick regular genres like, oh, romance, as I call generic, um, generic genres, romance, mystery, uh, literature and fiction. Yeah, let's niche that down a little bit because if I am a consumer and I'm looking for a specific book, I'm looking for like black paranormal romance, if you just have your stuff in sci-fi, 
I'm not going to see you when I type in black paranormal romance because you're just in general sci-fi. They have made it, they did an update, I think it was like, what, two or three months ago on KDP where you can go in there? It was two months ago? Okay, yeah, they did a, um, an update where you can go in there and change your, um, your genres, and it's way easier now because before you had to email them. Very nice via email. They always changed my genres when I was doing it. But now you can go ahead and do it yourself. You want to niche it down as much as possible. If you do not know how to do that, it's because you probably don't know your book as well as you think you do. So we need to talk about that, okay? But yeah, niche it down. Make the good, uh, the keywords, your, ta uh, your um, subtitle can also have keywords in it too so people can find you as well. Right here? Y you. <laughs> Oh, I love an Amazon ad. I make so much money on Amazon ads. Come talk to me, fam. We're going to have a good time. Let me, let, me, let me say something, though. Unless you have, at least, because I, I ran into this. I had um, a book that had 13 reviews. And the magic number is 20. Yep. And so if you don't have 20 reviews, you are literally throwing your money away. If you don't have at least 20 reviews on your book, and decent reviews, not just. <laughs> if you don't have at least 20 reviews, you may have good conversion to your book sales page, but you don't have the conversion to the sale. Because last summer I ran an experiment. So I, I was running ads on KVP. Um, some were on and some were not. So I, I had like four books I was testing it through. The one that had over 30 reviews would convert. The ones that didn't, and then you'll, you'll learn, if you take any um, Amazon marketing or do anything like that, you'll probably see that you have to have a, a number that shows social proof. Those reviews are social proof to other people that your book is worth buying. And so until you've reached that magic number, people are like, oh, I'm not sure, I'm gonna try a different book. And there's a million plus books that they can just go try another book in a similar genre. So I would not waste money until you are at the point where you can make sure you can convert. Like if you've got 21 best sellers, you've got enough reviews that you don't have to worry about like someone landing on your page and saying, oh, they have 15 reviews. That's not quite enough psychologically to make me pull the trigger. Get your family and friends. They won't buy your book, but they can't leave a oh, review. They'll write a, they'll write a good <laughs> review. We're not going to talk about all the people who say, I promise I'm going to leave it. I just haven't gotten around to it. It takes five seconds. <laughs> you don't even have to write anything anymore. <laughs> well, we're we're going to go uh, to you right here. I said historical fiction. So what kind of genre would that, would that? I said genre or marketing. Market? It depends on what the, because historical fiction can be a lot of different things. Like what era are you talking about? Um, is it something that you can tie into a real place? And t yeah. so that, like I wrote a historical fiction a couple years ago and it's about my great, great, great granddad. And so it's a real place. So I've been able to tie it to that place which has um, landmarks, tie it to a local um, library. So you can, can you tie it to it and have people buy into this real story? You had to fill them in. I get it. That's exactly what I had to do with mine. Right. But yeah, you find one if you know the people, you already have a built-in audience. If it's if it's something with real people, yes. um, who are still living that legacy, you have a built-in audience right there. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> So you have a built-in audience, it's just making sure that people know and you, you, you give, you share some of the nuggets. You don't ever share your whole book. 
Oh, that's a good point too. <laughs> when advertising, don't share the whole book. Because who's going to buy it? An excerpt really means an excerpt. Have you guys seen that online? You say, oh, here's an excerpt, and it's like 20 pages. I'm like, ma'am, this is social <laughs> yeah, media. Right. I am trying right. to go to the and you next get video. To scroll through. Now, see, but, but as a consumer, so I am not an author, but I am an avid book reader. I, I'm, you know, because I'm on the move, I'm trying to get into the audio book thing, but it reminds me of podcasting. But I could read, a, I could read an, an e-book, and I have gotten hooked from Facebook advertisements and after I spend five minutes scrolling, I'm fed up and I'm just buying it because at this point, so please, from the, from the, the reader, the, the consumer's perspective, we do like a short excerpt because I'm going to buy it. If, if it's good, I'm going to buy it, but you don't have to give me the whole thing. Yeah. Now, most of them, it's 15, 10% of the book is like Amazon, your preview is only 10% and they'll cut you off. Yeah. So don't give away more than that. I mean, even 10% is too high because if you have a book that's like, 190 pages that's 19 pages i'm giving you three pages and you better come back if you want the rest three pages is enough to get me that's especially if you cut it off yeah. right before yes, the right juicy before stuff happens the yeah. i actually have an attitude about it <laughs> so now it's an angry buy like oh my god no she <laughs> hold on i can't i can't feel it in quick enough now I gotta start from the beginning and catch up to this point just the you know that's how you use book final you will go ahead and you give them like two to three pages. I'll give them like two to three pages. In fact, sometimes I'll even give you a whole chapter because my chapters are short. So I'll give you a whole chapter and at the end, right when we're getting to a part where you're like, oh, I gotta know what's happening. It says, wanna finish reading? Press here to buy. Mm -hmm. And then to buy, to even get the book funnel like excerpt, you have to sign up for my newsletter. And that's how I've been selling books for the last several years. I, don't, I only do Amazon ads. I don't do Facebook ads, don't do Instagram ads. I use my newsletter and I use my, um, I use Amazon ads. I'll give you a quick example because I know we're almost out of time on how you can use this in conjunction with each other. My grandmother passed in 2020 and I had a book coming out three days after she passed. I was in no, no position to even do anything with book related. So I just sent out my newsletter and said, hey, buy the book. I did an Amazon ad for like five bucks. I went to sleep for two weeks and then I woke up and my book was number one and I had you know, the, the money and stuff rolling in because I had the newsletter working in conjunction with the Amazon ad. So you don't have to, once you get to a certain point, you don't have to put in so much effort. But the ladies are correct. In the beginning, you are going to have to go ahead and put in that work. The first couple of years, I was on the road. I was constantly grinding. You would see me everywhere. Now I'm like, yeah, you're not getting me on the phone for less than 100 an hour, okay? I'm not doing any of that. But it's only because I've gotten to a certain point in my career, yeah. You've worked hard for it. I love that. Um, I'm going to give the ladies an opportunity to answer your questions. We're going to uh, close this portion. But before I do that, for those that can't stick around and ask them individual questions, I'd like to give each of you the opportunity to share your contact information and how they can join your audience. <laughs> All right. So if you want to... If you want to ask me questions and you want me to help you, I'm always willing to help everybody. Usually around this time of year, I feel all fuzzy inside. I'll be trying to help everybody. Um, I always take one person from Black Writers Week and two mentor for six months, okay? And that person gets one-on-one -on -one time with me like every week and we mentor each. So if you want that, go find my mom, okay? She's over there at the pitch fest to her. You want to put your name on the list. Uh, she's going to ask you, what list are you talking about? The seller, like Phoenix told me to put my name on a mentor list, okay? So go ahead and do that. Otherwise, you can reach out to uh, Delphine Legacy Media. They are the ones who handle all of my consulting work. And online, you can find me at Phoenix Williams Books on Instagram. I am on Facebook. I don't look at that. I just talked to my dad on there. And then on Twitter, I'm at Phoenix underscore William with no S on the end because somebody took that name. Okay, um, I can be reached. You can look through, um, you can go to my website, and it's, that's at three, the number three, gpublishinginc.com. And our email is there, our contact information is there. Uh, I do consulting. Um, I do an hour consulting for $150 up front. If you decide to publish with us, we apply that to your balance that we discuss in, in contract and uh, once you get associated with us and we start talking, I always do a one-on-one -on -one with my clients, always. 
I have editors, I have illustrators, I have typesetters, but you will never have to communicate with them. For the simple reason is, which is why I mentioned earlier I'm a boutique, is because I want to carry you through. And I think that it's the right thing to do. I don't think that you should have to deal with my editor if you paid for editing, which is a separate cost, of course, but if you paid for editing, I don't want you stressed with them not being able to reach them because guess what? They're probably editing six or seven books <laughs> yeah. and they don't want to hear it, so they don't even remember who you are. Okay, but I do. So I have accountability to each and every one of my authors. And sometimes they call me at the most crazy times. I have one in Europe and forgot the timing. It was three o'clock in the morning and my husband looked at me and said, no, it can't be that serious. <laughs> nah. And I said, well, let me just answer. And then she, so I answered and she was in France. And, and I was like, oh God, okay. But call me at a normal time, nine to five Eastern Standard Time, okay? <laughs> but yes, I do um, that for anyone that comes to us. And our eight, uh, 800 number is 888-442-9637. All right, I am at burnettsherman.com and mounthopemedia.com. I'm on Instagram at I am Burnett, and I'm on TikTok at Burnett the Writer. So burnettsherman.com and mounthopemedia.com. You can always start there to find all the stuff that I do, consulting services, helping with um, indie authors who are trying to go the self-publishing route, especially if you're on Kindle, you want to do some paperbacks, helping you through the entire process, and really just one-on-one -on -one and personal. Burnett Sherman, so my name, <coughs> dot com, yeah. And then Mount Hope Media. B, B. B. so B. just my, my first name, last name, dot com. And I'm out right. here afterwards. I'd love to talk to any of you and answer questions. All right, well, thank you, ladies, for joining me today. And thank you to this amazing audience. Thank you. That's thank great. you to our venue for allowing us to do this again today. I'd like to um, also thank our sponsors, Amazon KDP, of course, um, AJC, Book Logics, Atlanta Mayor's Office of Film and Media, Partake Foods, and Penguin Random House. Thank you for supporting our efforts to amplify our stories. Make sure that you are following the festival on social media. If you're here, I assume that you're already following. It's at Black Writers Weekend. If you haven't, make sure that you tag us. And also, give me a tag and a follow, too. I am Brittany Kristen on all social media platforms. B-R-I-T-T-A-N-I-K-R-Y-S-T-I-N. Thanks again, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Did you guys, were we going to answer questions? Yes. Oh, yeah. oh, wait, does anybody have any questions? Did you want the microphone, Sandra? With the microphone. We're gonna repeat that one more time. Okay. Oh, wait. I'm sitting. I'm leaning, y'all. Okay. So, for anyone that's a, a pass holder, there is a master class presented by the Actors Guild going on in Classroom One. You just have to walk outside and make a left. 